And welcome back to The Daily Wrap. As former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton sees her political career in crisis over her email irregularities, Vice President Joe Biden is looking better and better as a possible Democratic presidential nominee. To get more on the story, let's go to Newsmax TV's John Bachman in our Florida studio. John? But all signs increasingly point to a Joe Biden 2016 White House run and the Obama administration seems to have no interest in tamping down those rumors. The growing rumors of a Biden run come as a new poll from Rasmussen Report shows that 46 percent of likely voters believe Hillary Clinton should suspend her campaign until all of the legal issues about her use of a private email server are resolved. But also one out of every four Democrats says the same thing. Nearly three out of every four Republicans say she should suspend. We also recently learned that Biden is inviting top Democratic fundraisers to the VP's home, the Naval Observatory, over Labor Day. According to the Washington Post, among those invited are top bundlers to the Obama-Biden campaigns of 2008 and 2012. And here's more evidence that Biden could eventually gain a fundraising edge on Clinton. According to CBS News, out of nearly 770 people who were considered top Obama fundraisers in 2012, only 51 have committed to bundling large sums of money for Hillary Clinton. Recently, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest did nothing to tamp down the Biden rumors by heaping praise on the vice president from the briefing room. He's indicated that he would make uh, a decision and announce a decision uh, before the end of the summer. Uh, so. Those of us who uh, enjoy the summertime, I think, uh, would uh, assume that that means he's got a month or, another month or so here to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to think about this and announce a decision. Ernest also told reporters that he expects Biden to make a decision sometime in the next month. Back to you guys. And thanks, John. Uh, you know, what's really interesting, I brought it up in the A Block, and, and John just talked about it some more in the B Block, uh, is that, that such a small portion of Obama's critical donors have gotten behind Hillary. Now, the question you have to ask about this, is this the result of the bundlers uh, harboring ill feelings towards the Clinton machine that go back to 2008? Is this a result that they're kind of trying to, to keep their powder dry until they see how this shakes out? Heather, what do you think? I think they probably want to hedge their bets. I think there's always been sort of a fear that there's a shoe waiting to drop when it comes to her campaign. And I think that what we're seeing now is that shoe is there and ready to drop and a lot of people are ready to back off. What I wonder is going to happen is 120 four people or entities have endorsed her. Do they now right. withdraw those endorsements? I mean, uh, that's an interesting question. And you've got some key politicians that have endorsed right. her. I know one of the right. things that surprised me was in, in light of everything that Tom Harkin came yeah. out in Iowa and endorsed her. Um, but, you know, Brad, we talked earlier about some of those, some of the small group Mm -hmm. that have been raising money from her might ditch or some told me they will ditch if, if Joe Biden runs. I mean, how does Hillary keep this going? Well, look, I pushed in the previous segment, I think she's going to have to drop out at some point because it's not sustainable. And there's and the, the numbers issue on fundraising, because I know two of the people who were invited to the vice president's right. home. It turns out there's a whole cadre of people who were significant Clinton supporters who were never big Obama supporters who got back in. Right. But they've made it clear to her, I'm told, that the way this is going, if Biden jumps in, they will follow him. And the truth is the numbers are bearing it out. The truth is Biden beats Trump by 12 percent, according to recent polling. He's in a dead heat with Bush. And there's every reason to believe that if, however this might happen, Kasich gets the nomination, mm -hmm. right? he's the only person out there who could maybe beat Biden. Yeah. So I think Hillary's going to have to assess this and then live with either saying, I will do anything that supports Hillary, or I'm going to actually do what I believe in is for the good of the Democratic Party. So guys, either way, the Republicans, I think, win. Guys, there's considerable discussion that the, one of the difficulties that Joe Biden would face if he does decide to jump in is how he's going to organize a campaign this late in the game. Now, I recall when John McCain went up to New Hampshire with no money, no campaign, organization. He flew coach, as the legend goes, because uh, he didn't have anything. He pulled off a win there and went on to win the nomination uh, in 2008. Are we being a little premature, Joe, uh, in, in saying that 
Biden can't pull it together with the time he has left? Use that word again. Absolutely, yeah. we're being premature. There are 464 days until the election. It used to be that you didn't announce until much later anyway. Just because everybody's announcing earlier, it doesn't mean he can't organize. In this, and with social media and everything else in terms of messaging, everything moves faster anyway. So no, he's not behind yeah, the curve. I, I but can feel you believe too, we're here actually talking about this at this <laughs> point? Yeah. Hillary's finished. Biden's jumping in. You told me this a month ago. I'd say you're crazy. Right. Right. On the other hand, I think, I don't know if you agree or not, Heather, we have to be careful to start saying that Hillary's finished. Hillary is not finished. The media might want to tell that story, uh, but she's not finished. She's winning handily in Iowa. Absolutely. She's not doing as well in, uh, in, in New Hampshire because it's next door to Bernie Sanders' home. Right. Uh, and if she gets to South Carolina, she's going to start to ra run it up. Yeah, so. I, I don't think that she's finished. And I think her numbers with the minorities are far better than Biden's are. I think that to cut her out at this point, knowing the Clintons the way that we do, would really be um, a lack of foresight. I think she's going to be in it till the end. I, I tend to agree unless she gets pushed out by the FBI. It does at this point, however, seem clear that the White House might certainly favor a Biden campaign over the Clinton campaign. In fact, the president hasn't ruled out the possibility that he might actually endorse one primary candidate over another, which really doesn't happen very often. Should Obama actually do that? Should he officially endorse his vice president? Could that have a boomerang effect, Brad, by freeing Mrs. Clinton to uh, get away from any loyalty she might owe to the administration? Boy, I don't see how. Whether he should or he shouldn't, it's unprecedented. And I think even saying that he's open to it, he has told the world who he wants, whether he does right. it or not. Doesn't it make you wonder what he knows that we don't? Well, I think he's, you know, I, I think you can take him at his word on this. I think he's been very happy with Joe Biden as his yeah. vice president. And he said it's the best decision he made. So I think that has a lot to do with it. In any event, do you think President Obama's endorsement will affect the Democrats' presidential nomination? Uh, let us know what you think at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Coming up next, it's Donald Trump time, this time with Megyn Kelly, and they're at it again. You don't want to miss this. Stay with us.